St. Mary's Medical Center's Health Talk with Kira Bresnahan. Joining the conversation now about the orthopedic unit is Connie Estridge. Connie is the clinical nurse manager of the orthopedic spine unit. She's been at St. Mary's for 27 years. Thanks so much for joining us today, Connie. Thanks, Kira, for the invite. Now, when someone decides they want to have this surgery, talk about what happens prior to surgery day. Well, most of the patients see the physicians in the office and they're provided a brochure to attend my total joint pre-op class. And in the class, it helps prepare the patients and their families to know exactly what we'll be doing with them after the surgery is completed. From pain control to discharge planning, equipment they might need. So the staff worked with them on that. It's a very big decision for these patients. Yes, it is. Not something they should take lightly. Now let's talk about the surgery itself. What happens, Dr. Nakano, in surgery to replace a joint? Well, uh, obviously it depends on whether we're talking knees or hips, but let's just talk about knees. Uh, with knees, we uh, the, the anesthesiologist meets with the patient right before the surgery and goes over their medical history. And, um, and then the patient is taken back to the operating room. And at that time, uh, the surgery is uh, performed. We make an incision through the front of the knee, and we have various instruments that we use to help us uh, make the cuts through the bone in the correct direction and uh, the correct amount. And then we apply the prosthesis. With a knee, we typically grout the prosthesis in place. With a hip, uh, oftentimes uh, we, uh, uh, we allow the bone to grow into the prosthesis so there's no artificial grout material uh, to stick the prosthesis to the bone. Now, Connie, you see a lot of these patients right after surgery. Can most people start to walk right away? Absolutely. The joint's fixed and we get them up actually dangling at the bedside the day of surgery or a if not walking with a walker to the bedside commode. Now, St. Mary's has a dedicated floor for orthopedic patients. It's the only one that's dedicated between Salt Lake City and Denver. Why is that so critical for patient care? Our RNs are very dedicated and have expertise in caring for our total joint patients. When they recognize anything that could be, you know, a complication or something they question, they're quick to call the physicians or the physician's assistants to avoid any Thing with bad outcomes to happen. And Dr. O'Connor, there's only ortho patients on that floor. That's, that's a big deal too. Yes, and as Connie was mentioning, the nurses uh, are used to seeing orthopedic uh, patients and as a result, if there's a problem, they, they can recognize it quickly uh, because of their experience and they're prompt to call the physicians and oftentimes these problems that arise can be headed off so that they do not become major issues. The other thing about the orthopedics floor up there at St. Mary's is we try to keep any patient with a known infection off of that floor. So you can rest assured that the nurse who is taking care of you is not going to be taking care of someone with a draining wound or infection in the, next, in the room next to you. And you also have what you call a, a daily living rooms that help you get back to how you'd have to live life when you get home, correct? Talk a little bit about that. Yes, we have a simulated car, so the patients and families are concerned about how they might transport home. They're taught by the occupational therapist and physical therapist, you know, how to safely get in and out of a vehicle when they leave the hospital and at home. We also have a simulated kitchen that just lets them feel at home with how would I get into my refrigerator by using a walker, any uh, activities of daily living that makes their safety at home a lot stressful for them. Now, Dr. Nakano, when someone leaves the hospital, it is a bit of a long road for recovery. How quickly can they get back to a normal routine, say if they like to hike or walk, you know, unaided? I tell people that if uh, at the end of three months, uh, they should expect to be feeling pretty well. Now, typically, they will improve for a year after these surgeries. But I would say that at three months, people are at about 80% of where they're going to be. And if you were in school, 80% is generally thought to be good. Right. Now, all surgery comes with a level of risk. What are some side effects or dangers or, or risks of joint replacement surgery? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because that is people have to consider these risks when they're deciding whether or not it's worth going through the surgery. And the risk, for instance, with uh, an artificial knee uh, would be things like infection or blood clots, uh, blood transfusions. Um, those are the kinds of risks that uh, they have to at least think about and whether or not, you know, am I willing to 
undertake those risks before I can uh, have this operation. With hips, the risks are similar, but there are uh, additional risks besides the infection and blood clot risk and uh, blood transfusions. There's also the risk of dislocation and uh, dis a discrepancy in the eventual length of the legs. I should also point out that uh, with blood transfusions, the risk of a blood transfusion these days is less than 1%, whether we're talking about knees or hips. The chances of getting AIDS or hepatitis is less than one in a million. So not very likely you'll need a blood transfusion and even less likely that uh, you'll have any uh, problems with the transfusion. And how long do these joints typically last? I think that uh, a, a person should expect to get uh, uh, 20 years or more out of an artificial joint. The failure rate at 20 years, I have to admit, is about 20%, whether you're talking knees or hips. So another way to think of it is the failure rate is about 1% per year. But that still means at the end of 20 years, we should expect at least 80% of these joints to be functioning. And that's probably a conservative figure. I think that if you think about any mechanical device that you have in your household, whether it's your car or your refrigerator, you would think that if you got 20 years out of it, it was a pretty successful endeavor, and certainly with artificial joints, uh, you can expect um, an 80% chance of survival at 20 years. What should people avoid at types of activities um, that might not be good for artificial joints? Can they still go skiing and play tennis? Artificial joints, uh, unfortunately, they don't make a four-wheel drive version <laughs> of an artificial joint. So... For that reason, we think that uh, it would be best if people did not participate in impact-type activities. Okay. So that would be running, jumping. It's generally thought that doubles tennis, the few quick steps that are involved in going back and forth, are reasonable. Most orthopedic surgeons also think that skiing is a reasonable activity, particularly more so with hips than with knees. Um, if you happen to hurt your joint, can it be replaced again or repaired? In many cases, it can, but uh, as I mentioned before, when you have to do the second operation, the risks are higher, and the chances of producing a good result become less. So you would have liked to avoid that second operation if you could. As far as technology of joints, you've been doing this for 35 years now. Have artificial joints gotten better over those three decades? There are different ways to answer that question. I certainly think the, that we know a lot more about how to put an artificial joint in to make it successful. But if a person were to look at a joint that we put in yesterday and compare it to a joint that we put in 25 years ago, I suspect that they'd have a hard time telling the difference between the two. Is there any new breakthrough technology maybe on the horizon that will take joints to the next level? I think that it's just going to be a gradual progression of improvement. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, the improvements that we th think have occurred do not turn out that way. Uh, for instance, the metal-on-metal metal hips was something about 10 years ago that we thought was really going to be a great boon for patients. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. And, and so you always have to be a little wary of new technology. I think that's one of the major things I've learned in, in, in my 30, 35 years of experience is that you always have to be a little wary of new technology. And I, I now tell my patients that new technology, you have to remember, is untested technology. But as far as the improvements with artificial hips, I don't see anything where it's going to be a, a, a quantum leap improvement. I think it's just going to be a gradual refinement of the process. And hopefully, hopefully it'll get to the point where genetic manipulation uh, will allow us uh, not to have to put in artificial joints. Right. And there'll be better ways to, uh, to give somebody a new joint. Now, before we wrap up, Connie, what's your best piece of advice for someone listening who's maybe contemplating having joint replacement surgery? Once the patients make the decision to have the joint replaced, they need to contact our orthopedic surgeons who are the best. They have great outcomes, and we have the best associates to take care of them. How about you, Dr. Nakano? Best piece of advice for someone listening, maybe contemplating having a joint replacement surgery? I would say that you need to be engaged in the process. A lot of times people or uh, just say, well, doctor, you just do whatever's best. But I think that, that it's always best to be engaged in the process and to, be, to learn as much as you can about the process. And, and then, again, make the decision, is it worth going through this operation in order to gain the benefit? Is it worth it to me, the patient? Does that benefit outweigh the risk? Exactly. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining me today. It's thank been you. a great deal of information and so wonderful to have such amazing health care 
right in our own backyards with the orthopedic dedicated unit at St. Mary's. Thank you. Thank you. Now to learn more about the orthopedic unit at St. Mary's Medical Center or any of their services, please visit their website at www.stmarygj.org. That's stmarygj.org. And thanks so much for listening. We hope you will join us next Saturday at 1130 for another edition of Health Talk right here on KNZZ 1100. We hope you have a wonderful weekend.